happy that, Hey, I, I got a college degree and I'm working for Google or something. That's, that's literally, that was my goal at one point in time was I'm going to get that degree and work for Google. Whether you on the outside of your market trying to tap back in Or just need a little help to find a way to gain some traction again You need some market reconnection We got the answers to your questions No second thoughts or second guessing You need some market reconnection Market reconnection podcast And today I'm joined with a very awesome dude By the name of Sal Habibi Sal, how's it going, man? It's going good. I'm excited to be on the podcast. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. You know, before we get into the cool business stuff that you've done, let's kind of dial it back for a second and start with introducing yourself. Tell us a little, a little bit about yourself and your humble beginnings. Yeah, it's funny when you when you get on a podcast and, you know, anytime you have an intro, it's always all the accolades and all the accomplishments you've had, but I want to have a different intro so everyone can actually see, you know, it's not how much money I've made and how successful I became and all these things. I'm an ex drug dealer, an ex drug addict. I got kicked out of college. I got kicked out of the air force. I got fired from every job I ever had. I was at the age of 25 living in my parents' living room um, at that point of time with all those things wrapped up telling me that's who I am. I'm a complete failure in life. That's who I was just three, four years ago. And Mm -hmm. now, of course, completely changed. Everything has turned around um, in the opposite direction. But that's a quick intro of who I was a few years ago. Yeah, yeah. You know, know, it's interesting you alluded to that because one thing that I've found is is that if you steal the thunder from people, they're a lot less likely to be expressive. Mm -hmm. Meaning that, you know, uh, I know you've done some great things with Amazon FBA. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But I think a lot of people fail to understand that humble beginnings are sort of the foundation of who you become. And it's part of your transformation of who you have become today. Because if, like you said, a former drug dealer being fired from every, every job that you ever started, if none of those things happened, whether it was in that order or in not in that order, you wouldn't be where you are today. It's no, that simple. I'll probably be working for a company and happy that, hey, I, I got a college degree and I'm working for Google or something. That's that's literally, that was my goal at one point in time was, I'm going to get that degree and work for Google until yeah. I realized that's the last thing I want to do with my life. Yeah, absolutely, man. And actually on that note, uh, I want to, I want, I want to get your thoughts on so you were at the bottom of the barrel, right? Uh, here you are, mid twenties, got nothing going on. What did, what did you do to elevate yourself, to help you elevate yourself, and get out of the rut that you were in? Yeah, yeah, man. There's there's a lot that was going on in that point of time in my life. Um, just so you guys can get some some background info on this, and you know, kind of um, have a vision of what was going on. So. From my early 20s up until my mid 20s, I got into this very toxic environment of friends who showed me how to make quick money, which was selling drugs. And the reason why I ever even got into that was because while I was going to college, I kept getting fired from every job. So I did have, you know, the jobs that teenagers get and college kids get. I went to, I was working at the local vitamin shop. I was working at the local gym. Um, I was working even at a restaurant. I was a host at a restaurant for a while. And hey, we made some cool tips. But then I saw some of my friends who were making what I would make in a month, in a week, or in a couple of days. And they were having these vacations and buying these nice things and having these nice cars. They got their own apartments. And that got me excited. Like, I I also want to start living like that while I'm in college. And they introduced me to this world of drugs. Unfortunately, it didn't just come to let me start selling some stuff and, you know, make some money. It came into me, let me use it every single day myself, which was a bad idea. And eventually I got to this point of time where I was in my own apartment and I had two bedrooms and one bedroom was literally just like a workshop where we would, you know, have everything and uh, produce, manufacture, do everything we did with drugs. And I had a lot of friends that were working with me. And that was our life. We would wake up, we would 
live in that apartment and that's what we did and I was still going to college during that point of time and that completely sucked you know all the good life out of me started ruining all my relationships I was scared to go to my parents house because they always knew I was high if I would step into my mom's house she would just look at me and start crying and I I tried my best to hide it but she would know she would look at me and she would know that I had just done something before I came there so so slowly slowly all my relationships started to get ruined and you know, I realized my life is just going completely down the drain. And during that time, I tried to first quit everything by going to the U.S. Air Force. So I did join the U.S. Air Force. It was the National Guard. So I didn't get shipped away where I could just completely run away from everything. I just got sent away for a while for basic training. And I, you know, I got clean and everything. And once I came back, well, guess what? You can't run away from your environment. I came right back into the same environment. And yeah. that was my life up until about 25 years old. Basically, what happened is one day while I was driving, I got pulled over and I had a lot of things on me. And I realized if I do get if he does check my car, I will get arrested and I could potentially go to jail for a long time. And I just started thinking about how's my mom going to feel? How's my dad going to feel where my parents are from Afghanistan? So yeah. very cultural. And, you know, um, in, in our in our family and things like that uh respect is huge and i was like how are my parents going to feel when people ask where's your son and they say oh he's in jail for drugs like those thoughts started coming to my mind and i started to cry in the car and i told myself that's it like i'm, I'm just gonna quit that's it and i'm not even kidding that day i cold turkey quit and wow. looking back a lot of people always tell me you know you can't there's no way you just quit like that and people can't just quit things and you have to like slowly taper off the only thing that can help you quit is being decisive. I made a decision that day that no matter what, I don't care about the money anymore. It's like the what I was getting from it, I no longer attach myself to. I didn't want the money anymore. I didn't want that life anymore. And I decided I would prefer to make my parents happy, even if that meant starting from zero, being broke. So I quit that, that day. And yeah, that's, that's how I quit that lifestyle. Man. That is so powerful, so powerful. You know, when you said that the only thing that can help you change your environment is being decisive, which I made a note of, is extremely powerful because um, I've had a similar situation with quitting smoking. You know, I smoked for a long time. I haven't smoked for 16 years now. And so um, when you were talking about that, I think a lot of people don't understand that you know, you, you have such heavy mental strength. A lot of people do, but they fail to exercise it because they are brainwashed by the environment that they have surrounded yeah. themselves in. And like you said, you know, I think, I think in part you had a God's calling that day. I think you also had an epiphany that day too, uh, which is mesmerizing because uh, it's not that many people will never cross that bridge. It's, it's just that many people are afraid to cross that bridge because yeah. they're afraid of, you know, the confrontations that it creates because you had to confront your current situation. We're like, fuck, uh, you know, I'm making quick money. I'm selling drugs. I'm going to disappoint my family, you know, very traditional, which by the way, being in, you know, an Eastern European myself, I can resonate with the cultural aspect as well. Oh, yeah. That was powerful, man. Um, right there so that day you know you're sitting in the car you know you're having this calling an epiphany then what then another thought that came to my mind was and i gotta thank him for this because i forgot my dad had told me that morning that morning he was on the phone with me and he said if you ever get arrested and go to jail you're not my son no more and don't expect me to come help you he wow. had just told me that that morning and that afternoon when i got pulled over that's what really like hit me with the thought of my mom feeling embarrassed. And I was like, wow, that if that is not a sign for me to quit today, I don't know what is. And the thing was, before that, I wasn't, you know, in bad things. I wasn't in gangs and I wasn't that, you know, I don't want to, you know, portray myself as this like bad boy because I wasn't prior to that. For me, it was just business. I wanted to make money and I found yeah. a way and I wasn't thinking about all the consequences. But that day when that did happen and I did quit, 
I had to face my consequences of what am I going to do with the environment, like you said. So I had to go back to that apartment and things got a, a bit messy because the people that were around me, they relied on me. I was the owner of the business. So they all relied yeah. on me. So I had to tell them all, I'm quitting everything. I had to tell them all, you're on your own. Go figure out your life. Get out of the apartment. Everything's going to stop. So that was very difficult. And I had a roommate back then. And I had a roommate who was doing everything with me. And here's the crazy stuff that you hear about all the time from, you know, people on uh, social media. And it might not sound true. But when I started to change my life, the first thing I did is decide, which I just told you about. I decided I'm going to change. The yeah. second was, how am I going to change my habits? So I started to look on the internet of, you know, how I can make money online and how to build, you know, better habits and successful people. I started looking them up and I ran into, you know, the books and Joe Dispenza, if anybody's heard of him, um, about how to change your mind, change your life, things like that. And I started to read books. So that very week, when I, when I said I quit, like I quit that very week, I was still in college and I went to the, you know, San Jose State University. I went to the library, picked up a book, came home and I'm reading it. And I kid you not, my roommate stood over me with one of my good friends who we were not friends no more, but he stood over me while I was on the couch, started laughing and recording me and put me on his story and said, you fucking nerd, what are you doing? You're reading books. And I was like, what do you what's wrong with reading books i'm trying to figure out how i can change my life and just started laughing hysterically and both of them are clapping and, and laughing and like you know you're a square we're about to go out like you know what whatever bro and that yeah. hurt me so much not necessarily like them laughing at me but the you know just thinking that i consider them friends and now when i'm trying to change my life and you could tag along you prefer yeah. to laugh hysterically and put me down. And that led to me, you know, destroying that relationship, which was great. So they also got removed from my life. And if people are having a hard time removing the toxic people and negativity from your life, you don't really have to try. All you got to do is change yourself. They're going to leave. If you change, they're not going to want to be around you. So I started to build better habits, read books. I started to wake up early. And guess what? All the people that did not want to do those things, they started to leave. They literally excused themselves from my life because I was no longer doing what they like, which was great. And that yeah. opened up, you know, the next phase of my life, the next opportunity that was, all right, I have removed the toxic people, the environments, the drugs, um, and my lease was ending for that apartment. So yeah, so that was basically the start of, ending yeah. that chapter in my life and moving on to the next chapter but I was still in college so we got to talk about um the college thing and how I ended up leaving yeah. college. yeah well I appreciate you know it as you were explaining when you mentioned towards the end that the lease in your apartment was ending and then the toxic people that uh, you had around you I think one of the things a lot of people are, are afraid of is isolation they're afraid when they get isolated from other people because as humans, we generally want to belong. We want to belong. We want to be a part of an environment. We want to be accepted actually by everybody. Oh, yeah. It's just part of our human nature. And so yeah. it's, it's, I think it's really important that you share that what happened that day, because I don't think, I don't, I don't know, maybe you do, you realize the merit behind how when they put you up on a pedestal and they were laughing at you, like how much that, like for me personally, that kind of stuff now fuels me. You know, oh, yeah. I look at them like, you know, you want me to fail? All right, let's see what happens in five years from now. And suddenly you find out that those very people who laughed at you are oh, in yeah. the same place five years later. Oh yeah, you know? well, I can't wait to talk about that in a little bit because... <laughs> Yeah. It was a complete, complete, you know, circle of what happened just a few years later. But let's yeah. talk about college. Yeah. Let's talk about, so you, you know, you were reading so, books, you get into college. Let's talk yeah. about that. So I'm in college. And the funny thing is I, I did not graduate. I went to college for almost six years. I went to four years of um, what's it called? Like community college. And yep. I went for four years because I continued to change my major. I did not know what I want to be. And what I 
absolutely hate about the education system is after high school, all you hear about is go to college, get a degree, go to college, get a degree, find your passion, find your passion, you know, find your career. But you can't just go to different classrooms and somehow magically find your passion and find your career. Like, yeah, the, the question I'm going to actually make a, a YouTube video and go ask college students this myself. The question I wish somebody would have asked me is how much money do you want to make after you spend four years in college and probably mm -hmm. give us $80,000? How much money do you want to make? And based yep. off of that, because that's the end goal. And if you're going to college and your goal is not to make money at the end, why are you going to college? Because you don't need yep. anything. So if somebody would ask me that in the beginning, I wouldn't have wasted so many years of my life, but no one did. So instead of thinking about how much money am I going to make, I was thinking, oh, what's a good job to have? What's going to be nice for my career? First, I went into fitness, which was the absolute worst. How, are, how am I going to make money getting a fitness degree, right? What is it called? Um, Nutritional science. How right. was I ever going to get rich with a nutritional science degree? <laughs> you're not, you're not going to get rich. So I went to three years of school for that. And then I switched to business yeah. marketing. And then I switched to business admin. And my sixth year of college is when I finally asked myself that question. Wait, when I graduate and get my degree next year, I was a year away. When I graduate and get my degree, what's next in life? Where am I going to work and how much money can I make? And I started thinking about, I put this vision in my head of how I want my life to look. And I wanted the nice big apartments on the top floor of buildings. I wanted, you know, the nice exotic cars. I wanted to fly yeah. around the world and travel. And I started thinking about how much is that going to cost me? So I started Googling people that have that lifestyle. And I was like, damn, there's no way any job, literally any job will ever pay me enough to live that lifestyle. And it sucks. It took me that long yep. to think about that. And if you're listening and you're in college, please ask yourself right now, what does your dream life look like in the future? And then just think for a second, is your degree ever going to be able to pay you to get to that lifestyle? If it's not, you're wasting your time. And that's what yep. let me think about it. And the second thing was, if you guys also think about it, look at the ultra wealthy people in the world right now. Or did you just think of any doctors or lawyers or engineers or anything? No. You thought of Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg. You thought about all yep. these rich, rich people, celebrities, athletes. What do they all have in common? They all own their own companies. And guess what? You don't yep. need a degree to own a company. You don't even have to go to high school to own a company. You can be nobody and you can start your own company. And when I realized that, that college is not going to get me to become the ultra wealthy because none of them even care about college. They actually talk down about college. That's when I dropped out. And I said, there's no yeah. point. Yeah. What's the point of getting my degree? <laughs> you know, it's um, a couple of things you mentioned about college because I'm someone who is a college dropout. And in fact, um, I got a lot of backlash for that because for one, I would have been the first in my family to graduate college. So talk about high expectations, right? Well, I kind of failed those, but let the parents down. <laughs> let the parents down, man. Let the parents down. And um, but you were talking about college and <clears throat> a couple of things I wanted to point out because you're absolutely right. When you think of successful people, you know, you hear Ty Lopez, you hear Mark Zuckerberg, you hear Tony Robbins, you hear um, you know, Elon Musk, right? And so there's two things that people don't understand about college. <clears throat> One is this that college is meant to teach you to, to work the system. That's what it's meant to teach you is to go out and get a job and that's it, to work the system. The other thing is people don't understand is this that really the biggest thing about college is this, it's more about, hey, when you get that piece of paper, it's about that you showed up somewhere for two years or four years and you got a piece of paper that says, congratulations, you were consistent and you showed up and you met expectations. The biggest thing about college, like you said, is this that Nobody that ever went to college became an, an innovator. Exactly all the people that you mentioned, even Steve Jobs, even Bill Gates, yes. you know, yes. all these guys actually, even Sergey Brin. A lot know, of them dropped the, out. A lot of them dropped out. Yeah. <laughs> actually, almost every single one of them. And um, it's interesting you brought that up because I think it's really important to understand that, <clears throat> you know, college will teach you about consistency and to work the system. But if you really want to build a fortune, you need real life skills. Because what, what does every company look for when they hire? 
Actually, most companies don't really care about your education. They care about your experience. They care yeah. about, so in this case, you're probably one of the most valuable Amazon FBA people on the planet, on the planet Earth, because you've done the most in that to, to be able to build a successful business that makes millions of dollars per year. And guess what? You learn all those skills out in the field. You didn't learn them in the classroom. Yeah. And that's really important. And I'm glad you brought that up because there's a lot of entrepreneurs, man. So people that listen to this show are anywhere from six, seven, eight, even nine figure business owners. And they have some kind of a rut that they're stuck in. You know, it's a mental rut usually of, so if you're a six figure, how do I take my business to seven or eight figures, right? Well, you're going to take it by not paying attention to the traditional crap. That's it. Pay yeah. attention to the current skills that are in high demand. That's what you need to learn. Like you said, you're absolutely right. If you were to Google some of the most successful people in the world and you suddenly see that, you know what? These people are self-educated. They have different routines. They get up early. They work hard. They work long hours. They have huge goals and dreams. And they work relentlessly. And they yeah. work because they love what they do because they love the grind, they love the journey, and they know that the journey, <clears throat> excuse me, the journey will take them <clears throat> to the end goal, which is, you know, if you want expensive cars, you want a different lifestyle, or yeah. you just want to have freedom. And most of these people want to have the freedom of saying, you know what, I want to travel the world for three months, and I can't. Guess what? Your nine to five is not going to do that for you. Yeah, yeah. And since since you mentioned that, I, I always feel a little, you know, like maybe it's too aggressive when I talk about this because I'm I'm someone who absolutely hates the idea of college. And I tell people that unless you're going to become a doctor, a lawyer, engineer, a job that absolutely requires it, but you're actually passionate to become, you know, some people want to become a teacher. You're not going to make a lot of money, but if you like it, there's nothing wrong with those things. If you want to become a teacher, go to college, become a teacher. But for the people that are just going just to go, do you realize how much money you're spending and throwing away and you're not even sure what's going to happen at the end? Yep. And a lot of times yep. when people think about, you know, <clears throat> online courses and online education or even, you know, going to, a let's say, a wealth seminar that a lot of, you know, yep. eight figure entrepreneurs are going to speak at. It's always, you know, what's the risk? What's the risk of you know, spending that four thousand dollars? Did anyone ever ask what's the risk of going to college? I've never heard anyone ask that. What's the risk of going to college? Or the other one, what's the success rate? Hey, Sal, what's the success rate? Did you ever ask what's the success rate of going to college? Probably not. No one does. But did everybody that go to college become successful? No. A majority did it. They hate their lives. They're at a job they hate. It's funny. Like That's what people need to really talk about. What's the yep. end of college? But anyways, that's what happened. That's why I dropped out, started my own business. But, you know, before I got there, there was a lot of other struggles that came in um, yeah. prior to, you know, starting my Amazon FBA business because I had just dropped out. But here I was, I had no idea what I was going to do. I also didn't have any education on business. I, I was basically just sitting in my parents' living room with no idea what to do in my life. Did you ever have any, any you know, experience like that where you're just starting from zero and, you're, you know, you're like, fuck, I'm a complete failure. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, there's been, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, five years ago, I was bankrupt, you know, and I still uh, vividly remember that day, you know, where I literally was just standing, well, sitting in my car right after I had paid a lawyer $500, which I didn't even have to file wow. for bankruptcy which was really just a repayment plan to help me retain my assets, you know, not take my car or get, get kicked out of wow. the condo that I was living in, you know, at the time. And, um, you know, at the time, you know, I was sitting and I was questioning myself, like, what did I do wrong? You know, what choices did I, did I make? And now I look, look at it back and, <clears throat> you know, maybe because the circumstances are different, you know, that's probably a part of it, but also look at it back to reflect. And I think to myself, you know, you know, that had to happen for a lot of different reasons. It had to happen because it was a rude awakening. It had to happen because it was a reminder for what I'm really going after. You know, other things like, 
look, you know, I was bullied all through high school, man. I was the ugly duckling, you know, and it wasn't because I was stupid. In fact, you know, I was one of the highest academic students in my class. I was one of the best athletes. You know, I was benching 185 pounds, my own weight at the age of 17. <laughs> you know, I spoke four languages. You know, I wow. spoke Bulgarian, Czech, Russian, and I was learning English. And I allowed, what's that? You could have went to the CIA. <laughs> well, you know, and that's just it, man. I mean, it's, I look at it back now, which, you know, that's the thing that I'm actually taking a stronger initiative now, some 20 years later, you know, on what bullying has done from like a self-esteem, self-confidence. I mean, I had gotten to the point where I thought, I thought I was worthless because I allowed people around me to, to make me feel that way. So really finding self-confidence. So I've been there to answer your question. There's been a yeah. lot of points in my life, you know, disappointing my parents, you know, hey, I didn't graduate college. You yeah. had the expectation of me to graduate college, but that's not what I wanted to do because I started tinkering with technology way back when I was 14 years old in 1994. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I loved. I took initiative yeah. and I was just passionate. And then it developed later on in life into, you know, what I did on the business side, business marketing, the ability to actually, you know, do stuff on a collegiate level, ironically enough, seven years ago, because I had skills in high demand that were not taught that we're not taught on the collegiate level. And actually a fun story about that, since we were speaking about college, man, is there was sort of a, a, a appreciation night that was being held on campus. And mind you, this is a fairly prominent school, you know, here in town. And here I am, the underdog, you know, I'm the college dropout. I'm surrounded with people who have 30 plus years tenure, like traditional faculty, right? And we're sitting there, they're having drinks, mingling, and I felt intimidated as fuck. I did. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I don't belong here, man. I'm like, yeah. I'm the least educated here. You know, I'm the least knowledgeable. And then here's what happened. And I still remember this. So the chancellor at the time was the former CEO of Sprint. This was years ago before they reformed and all that stuff. And he was a couple of years in and we're sitting there, I was leaning on the doorway and we're talking and we're just having a casual conversation. He just turns over and says, Ivan, I don't think you realize how much potential you have. I don't think you even see it. Like he saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And I yeah. still remember it vividly because he said, you, you, you have skills that these people don't have. This is why you're here. Because at the time, actually, I was brought on as an adjunct professor to build a continuing education course. So we're building a continuing education program on digital and marketing. I was brought in as an adjunct to build this course. Mind you, here I am, my college dropout, man. And like, I'm, I'm invited to build something that they need. And actually, this course, seven years later, is still running. Wow. And actually, something that I noticed in your kit that I actually want to talk about, ironically enough, um, I ran into a kid who took my course. He was like 19 at the time. That was actually from Dubai. Um, and he had taken my course because there was nothing like this. He had just heard about it on the internet and he literally flew into the U S you know, uh, later on, I found out that he comes from a really prominent family. I saw he had a photo with DJ Khaled on Instagram. Cause he got to meet him not too long ago, but like, so this kid like was the only person in the entire class that literally asked questions. Like it was nobody's business always raising his hand, always raising his hand. And come to find out that he took the course, graduated out of the program, and then he got a very prominent position working for like Toyota in Dubai, like very high up. And like, so like the, what you were saying is struggles, man. You know, everyone has their own struggles. Everyone does. We all go through some thing or several things in life. So like, just because you were poor and you made bad decisions does not mean that you have to stay that way. Yeah. You get, you have a choice to make. That's what people don't understand is that because most people are brainwashed into thinking that they should live a life a certain way because someone else said so. Yeah. Yeah. They're that's, afraid to make a choice. Yeah. That's the majority of society right now. I mean, if you look at the stats, it's kind of funny when, when I sit back and I, I look at like the big picture, I'm like, 
yet a lot of people are brainwashed, but also the problem with men today, men just aren't thinking. They just do not think. If you think and actually research and look at the stats, everything is fucked. Why is a majority of America obese? Why are a majority of people, no matter what poll you go to, go look at any poll, people don't like the jobs that they have. Yes, there are a few that do, but a majority of people, they're unhappy with their life. Why is depression so high in America? Why are all these diseases in America that everything is fucked, but people don't think, people just wake up, go through the cycle. And I think that the difference was why you were able to, you know, break free from that. And what helped me break free was yeah. believing that I could. And a lot of people that I talked to um, a couple of years ago, I was um, doing an MLM. It was funny. It was during, <laughs> it was during my Amazon business actually. And the reason I got into it is because um, somebody that I really look up to, um, who I still consider a mentor due to like personal development purposes. Um, he's in an MLM and he's like at the very top of the chain. And my goal was to meet this guy and I was able to meet him and I got, you know, I, I did pretty well in the MLM and I actually liked it because it was, I liked the personal development side of it. I was getting on Zoom calls every day, helping people with personal development. And yeah. I did end up getting out just because I didn't want to be in an MLM anymore. But um, the personal development, while I was there on these Zoom calls, a lot of people that joined, they were guys my age. And they would tell me, you know, yeah, I I'm proud of you that you did that, bro. I went to high school with you. Um, I'm just not smart enough or I'm just not good enough. And I'm not kidding. People actually yeah. told me, like guys my age would tell me, dang, I know you didn't get lucky. I saw you work hard for this cell, but um, I'm just not, you know, I don't have that in me or, you know, I, I just work and I, I'm just going to be working because I, I can't do that still stuff. And that's what's going to help you break free is believing yeah. that you can. And yeah, what what helped me believe that I can was the personal development. And here's the funny thing with today is, um, uh, I've seen a lot of people talk about this on Instagram. Of course, you know, Alex Hormozzi and yeah. a lot of entrepreneurs are similar. And yeah. Alex Hormozzi, if you guys don't know who he is, he's made over $100 million. He's, you know, one of the most successful entrepreneurs on social media, influencer. But what he preaches is that morning routines are bad. You shouldn't wake up and have a morning routine because it wastes time. He doesn't meditate. He doesn't make his bed. He doesn't take a cold shower. He doesn't take any, you know, um, you know, any organic foods and drinks. And he doesn't do any of that bullshit because it's all, you know, a waste of time. He wakes up, he drinks coffee and he gets to work and he's worth over a hundred million. And he's proof that, you know, that's how you become successful. And it's true because he did it. But yeah. How was Alex Hormozzi able to do that? He already had the discipline. He already had the self-belief. He already had everything instilled in him, the good habits of waking up and drinking coffee and putting his phone down and getting to work. You don't have that. A lot of people don't have that yet. I did not have that. If I go back three, four years ago and I did the Alex Hormozzi method of wake up and drink coffee, guess what I would do? I would wake up, I would drink coffee and I would go on my phone. I would not get to work. Uh, if I did get to work, I would wake up, drink coffee. What work would I get to? I had no business, right? If I had no business, <laughs> like what am I going to do on my laptop at four in the morning, wired up on coffee? I don't have a business. He has a hundred million dollar company. Of course, he has millions of things to do. So if you're listening to this and you're in the middle of like the personal development, learning about it, and you don't think it's yeah. going to work, it does work because all of us did it. All of us entrepreneurs that got to where we are, Somehow, some way, in our own ways, we had to develop ourselves to instill these habits in us. And for him, he naturally may have had it for 99% of us, reading the books, listening to the podcasts, writing down your goals, and, you know, raising that self-belief is what's going to help you break free. And that's what it was for me. And um, yeah. I told you earlier about the nighttime affirmations. So, yeah. Here's yeah. something funny that the extent I took the personal development. So not only was I waking up early every day, 5 a.m., sometimes 4 a.m., I was doing 75 hard, if you guys know what that is. Yeah. I was reading books every day, um, taking the cold showers, meditating twice a day. And another thing that I did every night before I went to bed, I would listen to this on YouTube. If you type in nighttime affirmations, there are a couple different ones where for eight to 12 hours, 
they just keep repeating the same phrases. I am rich. I am wealthy. I am healthy. I am successful. I am attracting all the things that I desire in my life. And this literally is a loop for 12 hours and it repeats the same things. And I played that every night before I went to bed. Trust me, my family thought I was crazy. Any friends that came around me, you know, late at night were like, what is wrong yeah. with you? Yeah. But guess why I did that? I wanted to become successful so bad that I didn't care how funny it looked, how stupid people thought it was. I wanted to try everything and do everything to develop myself to become a better person. And I think that did help me. That helped me a ton. Yeah. Waking up early helped me build discipline, right? Taking yeah. cold showers. Yeah, you don't need to do that to become rich. Alex Hormozzi doesn't do it. Yeah, you don't need cold showers. But guess what? If you do take a cold shower, it helps you build discipline. If you do work out first thing in the morning, it helps you build self-discipline. And now yeah. when you get into business, you have the self-discipline to focus. You have the habits that you need to run a successful business. If I just go take a random, you know, 23 year old in college right now, and I expect him to start an Amazon FBA business, you know, it would be good if first some of the personal development habits were instilled in him before he just jumps into it. Yep. Yep. Yeah. You know, um, as you were talking about 75 hard, which I'm familiar with, in fact, being in St. Louis, Andy for is a household name because uh, first form is literally 30 minutes from my house. They're oh, wow. So I'm fortunate in that regard. Um, but a couple of things you mentioned is um, two years ago when I was in the agency world, this, this colleague of mine said something that literally stuck with me for years. He said, there's multiple ways to skin the cat. And I had no idea what the hell that meant. And until years later, when I realized is that as you were talking about Alex Ramosi, because he's really hyped up right now, kind of like Andrew Tate, right? What's, yeah, what's yeah. going on? But um, m- multiple ways to skin the cat, meaning multiple ways to get to an end goal. Yeah. So what you were saying is like very much like you, you know, I've never been an early riser. Never. I've never literally for the vast majority of my life, I didn't wake up until probably seven or eight a.m. But I had to force myself to really change my routines because when I looked at some of the most successful people, I'm like, all right, these people are getting up at four or five, hitting the gym for about an hour. Maybe they're meditating. Maybe they're reading also. But they have all these like, you know, successful habits, right? So what does that tell you? And then you look at a few different people. So to your point is, yes, you don't need to take a cold shower, but you need to take one if you want to build that fortitude and that discipline. And then if you do it consistently, it helps you build that consistency. And so, because I'm going to be honest with you, I've worked with some, you know, eight figure people who don't even do half that shit, you know, and they're successful. I don't anymore. I don't anymore. I don't do all of it no more. So to add on to that, I don't do all of it anymore either, but I needed to do it when I was that kid who didn't know anything at all. I had to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're absolutely right, man. And um, so let's talk a little bit about this is really important. This is probably some of the most powerful stuff that entrepreneurs don't understand is building successful habits. that's going to help you build that discipline, that fortitude, yeah. that consistency, and really forge that drive. But also yeah. at the end of the day, man, if you don't truly desire to get the things that you want, like you get oh, up yeah. every day, oh, and yeah. you're like, there's fire under your ass and you're like, you know what? I am going to have money. I am going to change my lifestyle. I am going to change the trajectory of my family tree, you know, and be, because very much like you, man, I'll be the first one in my entire family, entire family to ever do something that nobody else has done. Yeah. Yeah, it is. um, uh, Sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. If you you were about to finish with the question. Yeah, about the desire part. That the desire and the self belief. There's there's a couple things that I would say um, can really help somebody become real successful. And what helped me, and one of those key things was the desire. See, when I was in my parents' living room, and all those things happened to me, correct? And I was complete failure. In my opinion, a lot of people would say, "Oh, they were life lessons." you know, call them what you want. To me, I was a complete failure. I got fired from every job. I had five jobs in my life. They all fired me. I was a drug addict. That's a failure to be. So I was a failure. But 
I want to get to the next level. I want to start a business. How am I going to do it? These things yeah. that I did helped me develop myself. Now I needed money. And this is where people get lazy, especially in America. But I got fired from every job. How am I going to get another job? No one's going to hire me. I don't know how to make a resume. All this bullshit. Guess what I did? I need to make money. I started driving for Uber. I had no car. Why? I just totaled my car. So I have no car. I'm probably not going to get hired anywhere. The yeah. only job I could probably get is to drive for Uber. And they let me rent a car from them. So my desire to become successful, I had to, you know, swallow my ego and say, no matter how embarrassed I feel that a couple of months ago, I was making a ton of money driving around selling drugs. Now I got to go drive people around town as their yeah. chauffeur. To me, that was extremely embarrassing. I hated that I had to do that, especially, you know, it was a good experience, I would say for the most part, but some people do get in the car and think like they're above you, like you're just a driver and they're like, you know, they get in the car and they're like, all right, let's go. And the whole time we don't talk. I'm like, damn, I feel like I'm their bitch. Like I'm just driving them around. So that's how I felt and I hated it, but I did that in order to save yeah. up money so I can start my business. Another thing I did, my dad, um, we don't have time to get into his story, but he, he, you know, has his own business and he, he wholesales merchandise for a living and he buys stuff from Costco. So at this point in time, he was buying those memory foam pillows from Costco and he had yeah. an excess amount of them. And for each one, he's only making like $5 profit. He told me if I really want to make some more money, stack up all those in the family car, drive it to the swap meet on the weekend and sell the pillows. How many pillows could I fit in the car? Maybe like a hundred. So <laughs> how much could I even make in profit at the end of the day? Maybe a couple hundred dollars, but I did. I stacked up those pillows in the car. Yeah. And for several weekends, I went to the swap meets to sell pillows to save money so I could start my business. And yeah. that's where I think the desire really has to come in. Because if I didn't want to yeah. become successful really bad, who the hell wants to wake up at 5 a.m. to go to the swap meet and sell pillows? <laughs> And drive people around town, you know, doing Uber. And a lot of people that come here that don't have the opportunities we have, I understand those are great things for them to do. But for someone who was born yeah. here, who could have went to Google, and now I'm driving for Uber, like, you know, it, it wasn't really a good feeling for me. But I did those things, and I saved up enough money to start my business. And yeah. that's that's really, you know, that, that was the breakthrough for me is, um, shifting from my parents' house, saving money to learning about Amazon FBA. Yeah, that's, that's really important. And I was actually taking a note for, um, on that, as you mentioned, because a lot of people will not swallow their ego. You know, they think um, they're above everyone else. And actually, there's a really good quote that stuck with me by Ed Milet. If you think you're above everyone else, you're actually below everyone else. Um, and there's a lot of entrepreneurs earlier in the game a little look at it and like whoa you know i'm the most talented or the most skilled you know so i got what it takes like bro if it was that easy most other people in your position would have gotten wealthy and rich a lot faster but the reality of things is just that you know you got to swallow your ego like you said you were driving for uber man because you were trying to save up money to start your business but you knew that again. like yeah, like you knew that like, you know, doing swap me pillows wasn't going to be your long term business, <laughs> you know, like you knew that like I'm doing this. That's the, the funniest thing for me to look back on, bro. Swap so, me pillows. <laughs> swap me pillows, man. Swap me pillows. You know, that's actually that has a good ring to it, man, because honestly, I think what makes stories powerful is just that when you can laugh about them, you know, and you look back and you're like, you know what? I, I But in reality, you did what it took. You yeah. did what it took. Most people won't do that because it's like, all right, if you need money, your business is struggling or whatever, what other means of alternatives you're going to exercise to keep it going, right? Yeah. Like, and you you weren't, you weren't were just starting out. So you're like, you know what? The swap meet pillows. All right, make a few hundred dollars here. Okay, I'm going to tuck it away. I'm still living at home. Mom and dad, okay, cool. I have barely any, any expenses. All right, I'm going to tuck this money away and I'm going to invest it, which I want to talk about that. So you're doing swap meet pillows, right? You're making a few hundred bucks per day. Now what? Like, where does the Amazon FBA come into the picture? Yeah. Yeah. I wish we had more time. Um, I mean, I have time, but I know usually these are an hour. So um, I'll, I'll try to explain as much of it as I can. So sure. um, 
long story short, I, I end up uh, meeting this guy who drove to my gym, my local gym with a Lamborghini every day. And he was around my age, maybe a little bit older, but around my age. He had a Lamborghini, he had a house on the hills, and he was really big on YouTube. Everybody knew him in our area. Um, he was the only guy with a Lamborghini in the whole entire, probably in the whole, like, several cities surrounding us, the only Lamborghini I've ever seen. And I was like, damn, whatever he does, I want to do that. I actually didn't know him prior to this, but I saw, I followed him on Instagram because he had his name on his Lamborghini and I've been following him. And, um, I ended up, I, I had already followed him before I even like got to that point in my life, but I never really took it seriously. And then he posted on his story that he's teaching six people right now. He's taking six more clients to teach them Amazon FBA. And in order to work with him, um, get on the call, but it's a high investment. Mm -hmm. So I had already actually got on this call with him and he told me it's $10,000. So he said it's $10,000. And if you want to do it, you have to literally say yes to me right now. You can send the funds later, but I need a yes from you right now. If it's a maybe or a no, um, we're not going to talk again. So I told him yes. And I had to find a way to get the money together to start Amazon FBA. And um, that was actually the starting of my Amazon FBA journey was giving $10,000 to a mentor and deciding that that's what I'm going to do with myself. And that's also why I was driving for Uber. I was selling pillows was to save money to start my Amazon FBA business because you also need money for inventory and things like that. So I did that. And um, maybe we'll have another, another chat where we could talk more about. Yeah starting the business, but something I want to talk about is what happened. So I paid 10,000. I start my Amazon business. I save up money selling pillows and driving for Uber. Um, another, you know, three, 4,000 went into this to buy inventory for Amazon. Right. I start my first brand months go by. I finally launch on Amazon and a month into launching, I'm at my mentor's house. We're friends now. I'm sitting there in his room and he's like, Sal, bro, come here. Congratulations. I just saw you made your first thousand dollars selling on Amazon. And he's clapping for me, and his girlfriend is there, like smiling. And in my head, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you? I just spent ten thousand dollars that I paid you. I spent money on inventory, and yeah. you're, you're clapping that I made a thousand dollars. And that wasn't even profit. Yeah, that was a thousand dollars in sales. Right. Profit was like a couple hundred dollars. So I'm like, damn, everybody was right. Maybe, maybe everybody was right. Maybe it was too late because he got ultra rich doing it and it's too late now. And he yeah. looked at me and he's like, Sal, I know how you feel right now. Trust me, when I first started, I didn't have a Lamborghini the first month. I didn't have a house in the hills the first month I started my business. You just started. Your product is just now getting some reviews. You're at the start. But from this point forward, your life is going to completely change. And I want you to go make a vision board today. And he taught me about making a vision board. And he said, here's mine. This is what I have on my vision board. Go home. Now that you're in the business and you're doing this, make a vision board and set some goals. What do you want your future life to look like? Because the trajectory of your business and how big you're going to scale it can really be determined by what your goals are. If people yeah. just sell on Amazon and you just want to sell, you're just going to sell things. But if you have a goal of, I want this in my life, well, now you're going to start thinking of how many products do I need? How many different products do I need? And how much do I need to be making? All these things will come into play of you manifesting that goal that you have, that you have on your vision board. So I made a vision board and I put the things I want on there. And I kid you not, our, our third month selling on Amazon, we did 25K in revenue. And that sounded cool before, but my members do far more than that now. So yeah, I did 25K, which is not cool no more, but that was my third month. And to me, that was crazy. I was making 600 a week driving for Uber and I just made 25K in sales <laughs> in a month, in one month. I was like, yeah. okay, that, yeah. that, when I, when I screenshot that 25K, that's when I felt like, all right, my life is now starting to change. And I'm glad that I made that first thousand dollars and he clapped for me. And we had that little moment there where I felt like maybe it's too late because I think that's where most people quit. Even today, a lot of people get into different businesses online and Hey, like you have a podcast, bro. A lot of people start podcasts. A lot of yep. people start YouTube. A lot of people start Amazon FBA. There are a lot of things to do online to make money. There are so many ways to make money. 
but people yep. quit yep. right when shit is about to go uphill. And that thousand yep. dollars was my point of time where I could quit and agree with my parents and everyone that said, Sal, you got scammed. This is a bad idea. Amazon doesn't work. Or the one guy in the world that was the only person who was telling me, no, it's going to work. Why? Because he had done it and he told me it's going to work. And I decided to believe in him because he was the one guy who had what I wanted instead of believing everybody else and said no. And it, it makes me remember uh, a quote from Jim Rohn. He said, uh, it's not really like just a quote, but some words that he said. He said, yeah. when do you expect a baby to stop trying to walk? Imagine going to different mothers who have toddlers and asking them, at what point of time are you going to stop trying to make your baby walk? Because they keep falling. They keep hitting their heads on the table. Yeah. They keep falling off and hurting themselves. Wouldn't it just be better to carry them and stop trying to make them walk? Maybe walking is not for them. No, everyone ends up walking. Every single person, unless they have something, you know, you know, something that's making them ill. Every baby yeah. eventually learns how to walk. They don't give up. And that's how you got to take it when you start a business. Eventually, you will get there if you just don't give up. And babies do it because they're not influenced by all these things around them. They don't, they don't even, they can't even think yep. about the things that you're saying. They just, they yep. wake up and they have to learn. With When you're grown, you can't just go and keep going and going and going because of all these things that are coming at you. It's too late. It's a scam. Don't try it you know, all the bullshit and you give up, you're influenced by people and you give up. And yeah, well, you know, uh, I'm going to keep it at that, man, because you said it very well. There are so many important things that you mentioned. And I think the, there are so many takeaways, you know, in, in this interview that you mentioned. And I really admire that personally. I want to thank you for, for sharing all of those things because a lot of people just do not realize the importance of mental and physical state and how that shapes you into who you aspire to be. Because everyone, to your point, is just that, like you said, the analogy behind Jim Rohn, which I absolutely love that guy, one of the forefathers behind personal development, right? Huge appreciation for him. But um, I want to thank you for that because it's really powerful. It doesn't matter what you do, what kind of business you start, you know, you really get need to get your mindset right and you need to build successful habits in order it's to cliche, be right? Successful. Like the things are saying it's cliche. Every entrepreneur says it, but just think about it. Why does every entrepreneur say it? Yeah. Because it helped all of us get to where we are. And um, if anyone's wondering, you know, that's what I was doing. And I did these yeah. things like what happened? What's the result right now? If we don't make at least $10,000 a day, it's a bad day for us. Imagine that. The minimum we make every day, my partner and I combined, yep. is $10,000. And if we don't, we're looking at each other like, what the fuck did we do wrong today? And we work harder. 10000 at least. So far this year, we've already made about $700,000. Yeah, And that's all due to the things that I did to get here today. And again, no college degree, no job. No company will ever, they, no one makes that much money working for a company. So looking back, I did the right thing. I wanted these things in my life and I knew the one path to get there for me would be to start a business. And that's what I did. And Amazon FBA helped me get here. And, yeah. um, you know, I, we talked about me thinking it's too late to start. And yeah. a lot of people do think that, right? especially with like, did you think that with podcasts, you know, am I too late? No, I mean, it, and I'm glad you brought up that question is it's, it's never too late. You know, I, it's not, it's not, it's never too late because like I, I follow guys like Gary V. Right. And he talks a lot about like, if you're in your thirties, if you're even in your forties, you know, I'm 43 years old, you know, even if you're in your fifties, like it's never too late as long as you're breathing. That's basically yeah. what it comes down to because you never know. I mean, you are, and this is an Ed Milad thing, you're one relationship away from changing your life. You're one opportunity away from changing the trajectory. Like you could be broke today, you know, you know, living somewhere and you're thinking, fuck, my life sucks. You know, I got no money. I'm depressed. You know, I see no future. And then tomorrow 
you meet someone very much like your mentor and suddenly you're like this is the only guy that has told me something that nobody else has yeah and that's the difference is this that and this is someone that you know what you're driving a lambo has a nice house has enough money no yeah. complaints and he's done it so guess what you know i'm gonna yeah. follow him because everybody else you know is telling yeah. me shit that's not working hasn't done anything for me exactly so Podcasts are still, you know, six years later, man, even it's now more than ever, everybody's getting in the podcasting game. But yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, you're an exceptional guest. And that's why I'm specifically selective about who I bring on. Yeah, because I knew just by reading your background and bio that you were going to bring fire, you were going to bring real knowledge, real things that you've learned, talk about struggles, talk about obstacles that you've overcome and not only personally i'm a fan of people who have had to jump through fires to get to where they are but i also yeah. understand psychologically what that does to you you know yeah. you're big into fitness from what i saw in some of your photos you have healthy habits you invested into a mentor and as a result that created a snowball effect where like you said you're making ten thousand dollars per day, $700,000 into revenue with Amazon FBA. But none of that happened unless you invested in yourself. So yes. that's what, you know, and, your question. go ahead. And not being influenced. That's why the baby thing was, it hit me really hard and I wrote it down is babies don't get influenced. They, you know, by when it comes to walking, they're going to wake up and keep trying and trying and trying until they walk. But when you're older, yeah. You know, you're influenced by all these people. And here's the thing about it being too late. When I was starting, everyone, including my family, told me it's too late. And then I did it. And then I started to help my friends start. Everyone told them it was too late and that Sal got lucky. Then my friends did it. And now people that are starting today, people tell them that it's too late. And here's something funny. Um, yeah. About like four months ago, one of my members who is now one of my most successful members of Amazon, she started. People probably told her it was too late. In her first month ever selling on Amazon, in her first month, she did forty thousand dollars in sales. Compared to me, I did a thousand my first month. She did forty k in her first month, and people still say it's too late. So here's the thing: people are always going to say it's too late because for them it is. They're scared. They're worried. They can't take a risk. They don't know any better. They're brainwashed. And no matter what business that you want to get into. You know, I'm not here to convince people to do Amazon. I don't care if you're going to get into YouTube, crypto, Amazon. Everything works because we are all making money in these industries. Every industry you can hear about. If you're yeah. wondering, does it work? It does work because there are multimillionaires in all of them. Is it going to work for you? That's going to come down to you. And if you have the belief to go and become an expert at it. And if you do, it's going to work out because it works. Yeah. The businesses all work. Yeah. Well, Sal, I want to I want to first say thank you for your time, man. I'm I try to be very respectful of everyone's time because I know time is money, and yeah. you've brought you've shared a lot of valuable information, um, you know, for everyone uh, on the podcast. And having said that, you know, to wrap things up, uh, if people want to connect with you to learn about your story, Amazon FBA, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Best way would be on Instagram. I'm I'm very active. Um, I don't have any you know social media managers. I do everything myself. So on Instagram, okay. it's at Sal underscore Habibi. Um, just go ahead and search that up, and we can connect on there. Um, if you have any questions about anything at all, you can definitely connect on there. Awesome. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate you having you on. Yeah, this was great. Thank you. Whether you on the outside of your market trying to tap back in. But just need a little help to find a way to gain some traction again You need some market reconnection We got the answers to your questions no